Naptown Tuner here. It's time to bang out another piece of 2.0T TFSI turbocharged direct injected Audi VW piece of history. It's a cylinder head video. It's cylinder head extravaganza. Let's talk about it. So let's say you got an engine. It's got no compression. I've got another video where I show you what it sounds like. I show you the fault. Uh, there's scenarios that go on here. So the this one's a little bit torn apart already, but let's just get started here. First off, you can't run your compression tester when, well, I mean, you can, but it's not gonna do you any good. You, you can verify that you have no compression with your engine that's out of time, but you would have to put it back in time to check your compression. And then, you know, if it's already that far out of time, you're not gonna get it back in time for without it slipping back out of time again. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So what you could do possibly, but I wouldn't suggest it either, is you could put it back in time and carefully leak down test it. Why am I talking about this? Because these things can be really tricky. Let's look at which one. Let's look at this cylinder head right here. You see the witness marks on those valves? The valves look perfectly seated. But if you look really close, if you look really close, you can see how some of the carbon has knocked off that, that ring around the edge right here. It tapped just a little bit, just just a baby tap. That one's pretty hard to see. See right there, just, a, just barely tapped the carbon. You can see it the best on those valves right there. Now, just with that little baby tap, that's enough to where it needs new valves. That's enough to where you're gonna leak enough compression to where it won't run. And to prove that, I'm about to flip it over and we're gonna leak test it with water. So here I just have some basic water and it's tilted up to where the intake valves are on the, so typically you're gonna bend the intake valves. We'll talk about that in a second. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to carefully, without spilling, I need to get it all in these intake ports. Let's see if I can do this. See, just dumping out. They look perfectly seated, but they're obviously not. So you cannot trust your borescope. Now let's go cylinder two. Cylinder two appears to be holding. Cylinder three. I said it appears to be holding, but it is weeping. Cylinder three is all the way full. You see there, water. And cylinder three appears to be holding. Cylinder four. Cylinder four is weeping. So, yes, if you would have put this engine back in time, it would have ran, but it would have had a severe misfire on cylinder one, and it would have had a misfire on two and four as well, potentially. I don't know how, I don't know how bad these are, but it tagged them, right? Look, at it's even weeping out of the top, all the way around it, both sides. The only cylinder that's holding is cylinder number three, and it still appears that it barely tapped cylinder three. So this is a tricky situation to where you cannot trust your borescope, like I was saying. So let's move on to another scenario. Another scenario that was brought to my attention, well, I've, I've known about this for a long time, but a lot of people are starting to ask questions, so I need to put this all together. This particular case, we've got you know, one of these cylinders does not look like the other. No, we're not worried about the, the one that has some of the carbon missing. Sometimes the carbon comes off and then the valve looks clean again. I'm not worried about any of that. 
the valve's gonna be a little bit open right there because the cam tray is still on it. Uh, but look at how wet this cylinder is. That cylinder is just shiny wet because, because we've got a big old hole in the exhaust valve. Now this is, I, I initially called it chipped, but apparently it's a type of burnt valve. Now there's no real good explanation for it. This engine that I pulled off, every single engine slash cylinder head that I pulled off in this type of scenario did not have a tune on it because I did it at the dealership. So uh, this, uh, it's not, just to, to explain, you can't blame something like this or blown piston ring lands. You cannot blame it on your tune. Now, is it gonna make it uh, more prevalent of an issue if you do tune it? Yeah, I'm not gonna argue with that. It's, you're gonna run into catastrophic damage more when you're running more boost. I mean, that's just common sense. If this can happen without a tune, blowing a piston ring land, and if this can happen without a tune, chipping a valve slash burning a valve, then it can definitely happen more with a tune. So, you know, if you want reliability, just keep the thing alone, do the factory updates. You're gonna have the best chance of survival without draining your wallet. Yeah, you might not keep up with all your buddies, but who cares about all that? Who cares about all that? You like to have money so that you can not have to worry about paying your debtors all the time. Now, this is the worst catastrophic. It's not really even all that catastrophic. These things are fixable. But this came out of time so bad that it hyperextended the intake valve and the exhaust valve. You see how I'm putting my finger behind the exhaust valves? You can see that one easier. It's all the way extended. So it's bent, it's these, so to give you an example, it's not gonna hurt the pistons. These pistons are like hammers compared to these valves are like spoons. So when these, pa these pistons, it comes out of time, it's no longer timed. These pistons will come slam into those valves and then the valves bend and they stick out there. They are no longer able to move back in. So initially, whenever I first started, I was under the wrong, I was under the misconception that uh, that's the reason why you needed new valve guides because it bent inside there. But my cylinder head guy was always replacing just the exhaust valve guides. And the cylinder head guys say that that's pretty common that the, the exhaust guides are the ones that typically need replaced. The intake guides are typically good. Now in this particular head, someone used a, a whiz wheel. I do not recommend that. That's not a good idea. That's a quick jobby, but uh, you're not gonna do justice on your cylinder head when you, you can potentially get high or low spots and, and that kind of thing and potentially mess up your seal. That's a lot worse than even not following the torque instructions step by step, in my opinion that's a different story, but clean this surface with the razor blade. Don't use power tools. Even cylinder head gasket instructions tell you that. Now let's move over to here. This is a perfectly good cylinder head, but a piston came all the way apart. And you see how ate up this cylinder head is? Now I probably still even could use this, but personally, I don't trust it anymore because it just beat the living tar. See, this part is contained inside the cylinder. It beat the living tar out of those sides and it probably got some stuff. I don't even know, you know, that's the intake. So you're not gonna see anything there, but I doubt that it blew stuff out the exhaust that's visible. You know, it's, I'm not gonna be able to see anything through that exhaust port. But, uh, and look at this, the electrode right here blew off. So, there's probably, yeah, see how, when that electrode blows off, you can have scuffs. This is gonna be a little bit hard to see with the carbon there, but you can have some little scuffs on the side as well. But that's a really weird situation as well. That's another example why it's a good idea to not wait forever to change your spark plugs. 
Change your spark plugs probably every like 25, 30,000 miles if you have really good ones. Don't cheap out on your spark, spark, spark plugs are so cheap. Why are you cheaping out on them? Get good spark plugs, the, the best spark plugs you can get. Bosch or NGK and then the higher levels because you don't want your electrode to blow off from neglect and then that little piece floats around inside your cylinder until it finds its way out of the exhaust. So I'm just gonna retire the cylinder head. That's, that's a good reason to retire it for my liking. Uh, here's another reason why you might consider retiring a cylinder head. Everything on this one is legit when it comes to the valve sealing. Everything looks actually pretty beautiful on this one. They all have the same color, the same consistency, everything looks nice. But I showed this in a different video. This was a, a, a teardown video where a rod bearing had completely destroyed itself. Most of the time what you're gonna see is, uh, and see this, the, this part all looks perfectly fine. They can get a lot worse than this. This is actually salvageable. Now, another thing is you absolutely cannot mix and match these cam trays. These cam trays are married to each other, period. Their line board, their line board and none of them match perfectly. You have to have, uh, did I explain that correctly? They're, you have, they're, they're not precisely line board all the same. It's just fractions of a millimeter off. So this, this cam cap, this cam tray will be just slightly offset if you swap them and then it's gonna score up your bearings. So I've seen that before too. I've seen people trying to sell cam trays that are cleaned up and powder coated and stuff like that you can't swap them don't buy a cylinder head without the cam tray either if you buy a rebuilt cylinder head like that without the cam tray you just screwed yourself i've seen that as well people trying to sell people trying to sell rebuilt cylinder heads but it's just the bottom end of the cylinder head without the tray dumb can't do it now uh let's take a as i was getting as I was getting into this conversation about, I gotta turn this over and spill it out. Now, the top is a lot worse than the bottom, especially when we get to the back. You see us some scoring? So that back there is just a cap, but we have some scoring right there that you could even stick your nail into and feel. Right there, it's a lot better. And then it's a lot better there. And that's almost fine. And then the exhaust side typically is always fine. The exhaust cam is typically always fine. What you would do is you take some, some fine sandpaper, some like, I don't know, some like 800 grit or something, and, uh, and just sweep them out. Just, and I've showed that before as well, but I don't know if I deleted that video, but you just clean up these. And I learned that from my cylinder head guy as well, cause that's what he was doing. And um, you just barely swipe them. You swipe them this way, this way in an X pattern. And then you come back the other way and just swipe, swipe, just to clean up the grooves a little bit. And then the reason why I take my cylinder heads to get rebuilt at the machine shop is because they also polish the camshafts. So that's a big part of it. Getting the, getting the camshafts polished is a big part of it. So you don't end up with grooves again. So what do I have here? This is a rebuilt cylinder head, but this guy rebuilt this cylinder head and just threw it on an engine that had horrible oil consumption. The oil consumption was three, uh, a quart every 300 miles. So yeah, the cylinder head's perfectly fine. Look, everything's clean. Everything's beautiful. I can still reuse the cylinder head. Now, this is a good example of a flex fuel cylinder head. So what's the difference between this regular cylinder head and the flex fuel? are these bolt holes right here. A flex fuel rail bolts onto it. And uh, let me show you a better view right here. The part number on this one, 06H103373N, compared to like a, one that ends in, what is that? Am I getting it on? right here 
I can't even see that last one. It's a K. As far as I know, I have not found any cylinder heads for the flex fuel engine available in the aftermarket. I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, someone pin it in the comments or show me where you can buy it. But especially for the flex fuel cylinder heads, you're just gonna have to get it rebuilt. And like I showed, this is one of the main reasons why you would wanna have it re, you don't just wanna throw valves. I don't, I mean, I've seen people do it before, but I don't do that. I don't just throw valves in and lap them in. That's probably how some people do it. Like I said, I've seen people do it before, but I don't trust that. I prefer to get my camshafts polished. I prefer to have the cylinder head guy inspect it and put new valve guides in the exhaust side if it needs it. I prefer to, uh, I, I just prefer to have them go through it and, and make sure everything's good with the valve job as well. They don't just lap it in with compound. They actually put it on their machines and actually give it a proper valve grinding. So, and if in situations that I have to just discard my cylinder heads, then I have to buy new cylinder heads. But um, so far, what I've been doing is I have been buying just this cheap valve kit, just the run of the mill valve kit, because, and you know, get all your valves in there. So, you replace the valve guides sometimes. Sometimes they're not bad enough, but most of the time they get replaced. Your valve stem seals, your valves, camshaft polish, and I've got a stack of receipts here. And this is just a partial stack. I've been going to the same machine shop for a long time. But just to give you an example, one of them had a valve job. So they also hot tank it and clean it. So valve job, this one had to get the cylinder head decked. And they tell me whenever it needs decked. Most of the time I ask them not to deck it because I, I just clean it with a razor blade and they're straight. Uh, and then ex install exhaust guides. Just installing the exhaust, just the labor to install the exhaust guides is $150. So on this particular machine shop trip, I paid $420 and I bought my own parts. So by the time you buy your own parts and go to the machine shop, you can spend close to $600 then the core is worth something, the, the core of the cylinder head. So just rebuilding it costs the same amount as a Chinese cylinder head. So uh, now this one, this one was just a valve job. It was just 160 bucks. So sometimes you can get by cheaper. This one, just a valve job. For some reason, this one was 190. Let's see this. So, okay, I guess out the door on this last one was 165. So I don't know why sometimes they, I think they raise the prices, but uh, this one was a valve job and install guides. So this one out the door was 261. This is all just labor. I, I supply the parts. This one was just a valve job at 165. Now they're also hot tanking it for me. So I don't know if they're forgetting to add that in the price or what, but Valve job, install guides. This one was 286. This one, valve job, install guides, 286. Valve job, install exhaust guides, install exhaust seat. I had to get a seat on this one. See, some people, they're not experts with cylinder heads. So if they just would have lapped in valves and they really needed a seat, they'd be asking for trouble because you'd sell the car and then someone else would have problems. And I just don't like that. Um, especially now that I'm doing YouTube and all this other kind of stuff, I have to really make sure everything's legit. I, I can't just nickel and dime these things anymore like I used to. I really have to scrutinize every single thing. So this one, valve job, 190 bucks. So a lot of times you can get, and I have probably three times that amount receipts. I just didn't keep them. But, uh, a lot of times you can get by pretty cheap by taking it to the cylinder head shop. So why not? Is there's no reason to go so cheap that you try to lap them in yourself with valve grinding compound. I'm just completely against that. Okay, that's the video.